here in the workshop where the magic happens or sometimes uh, we hope it happens uh, as we try to fix these old vintage games and I have a new game to show you that has recently been added to the arcade it's actually been done for a while and if you saw our other video with how to put laminate on the game you're gonna recognize it it is a Mikey by Centuri a very obscure game it was actually the last game released by Centuri it was developed by Konami out of Japan now I have a rather special video I've been working on for the last three months, which is a pretty large, overarching, kind of a little bit better produced than some of my other videos where I'm going to talk about the rise and fall of Centuri as a company, which at one time was one of the biggest manufacturers in the U.S. and uh, unfortunately went out of business in 84. Uh, so this kind of ties into that a little bit, but I didn't want too much time to go by since I have... I have other projects that are coming up that I'm going to be working on. So I wanted to go ahead and show you guys the Mikey cabinet, which is pretty neat. We've done some pretty interesting things to it. So let's go upstairs to the arcade and check it out. So here is our Mikey. Uh, Mikey was not widely released. It was the last game Centuri would bring out. It came out after two other Konami licensed games, Circus Charlie, which is kind of like a track and field, but circus based kind of game. It's actually pretty fun. And that was a minor hit for Centuri. And then they came up with a game called Badlands, which is a Laserdisc game, that, which didn't do very well, like most Laserdisc games. It was uh, not very well received. So then we have Mikey. Mikey was released as a dedicated version, but the dedicated version is extremely rare. They seem to be what was left over of Circus Charlie cabinets and they just slightly retooled them. Um, and the Circus Charlie cabinet itself was a retooling of the Gyrus cabinet. And then mostly they were released as a kit, a conversion kit. And that's where you see most of these Mikeys. And that's how I got mine. It's a conversion kit board. There were three different versions of the game. There's actually two English speaking versions. One is a little different than the other. And then there's a Japanese one where the school setting is replaced with an office setting. So uh, the marquee and the control panel and the side art here, this was all done by this old game who makes the best reproduction stuff. Uh, sometimes you have to wait a little bit, but you know, you get what you pay for and patience is a virtue. But there's a special kind of trick to this game I want to show you. Uh, that's, I think, a little more beneficial and makes it more than just kind of this weird, obscure game. So let's take a look in the back. Okay, so we've turned the game around here, and when we open up the back, what we find is something pretty interesting. And it's a drawer that we've manufactured that slides out. You can see we have a light here also with a motion sensor that comes on, so you can see a little bit easier. And this is a six-way JAMA switcher. Now, all these boards are original Konami boards from the era. We have Mikey in the first position, then I have a Circus Charlie, and then I have a game called Tutankhamen, which Konami also made but licensed to Stern. And then we have Rock and Rope, which Konami released on their own. Now, we can hold up to six boards in here. It gets a little tight, unfortunately, on some of these Konami boards. So I only have four in here right now. But you could pretty much put anything jam in here that you wanted to as long as it runs on a two-button operation. Uh, very easy to change. Um, I like to use the original hardware, and I use this foam underneath of it because it's stackable so the boards don't quite line up. You know, height-wise to the harness, I can make them a little bit higher or uh, a little bit lower, which makes it easy. And it's just um, super clean down here, and the drawer makes it a lot easier because I find a lot of times with these jam harnesses, it's really kind of hard to get things in and out. Um, once they're in there, they're in there, and this way uh, you don't have to go digging in the game and hit your head on the monitor or something. You can just slide out your drawer. Um, super easy, super fun. I don't know why more people don't do this. Um, maybe I should patent it or something. No, I don't think so. But, um, so there you go. Originally we bought this game as a Matt Mania challenge uh, from Craigslist, of course, and I really just wanted it for the monitor. It was pretty inexpensive. The cabinet had uh, 
seen better days uh, in the wrestling game, Matt Mania. There's probably fans out there, but it's uh, not the greatest. The Originally, it was a Red Alert by GDI, which is a pretty obscure shooter. GDI would only make one other game, a centipede copy called Slither. Uh, Red Alert, I guess some people like it, just like any game, there's always going to be their fans. I'm not one of them. And the cabinet had been beat up so much, uh, I felt like it didn't really matter uh, that I wasn't going to restore it. I always like to draw out exactly what I'm going to do before I do something like this to so see see my kind of where I saw the artwork and the sliding drawer concept there in the lower right hand corner as well. Uh, this cabinet had more paint on it than any cabinet I think I've ever seen. That's four layers of paint there. You have two layers of black, green, and the red underneath, which was the original, was left to the red alert artwork. That green paint also was very powdery. I'm only assuming at one point it was a golf game. So when you ever do these things, hey, wear protection. Um, you don't want to breathe that stuff. Underneath, the wood was strangely good looking once I finally got it stripped down. Uh, you can see the control panel as well was kind of Swiss cheese. Uh, inside, it was just a mess, so we had to clean it up and totally redo it. Uh, the monitor was rebuilt, of course, and then we started building our drawer. And this took a little bit of trial and error, but we measured everything, and then we were ready to paint the outside. And then, of course, we did the laminate, and you can check out the video on the step-by-step -step process of the laminate. Uh, I am a laminate believer now. It's a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it. This game just... It looks better than it has any right to. Also of note, the, the right side had suffered a good bit of damage in this cabinet, so we did have to go through and repair it somewhat. And there we are finalizing the drawer. Um, the other thing we had to address was the control panel, which had been 18 different things. So I got this whole punch, this metal punch, off of Amazon. And um, there's the control panel. We're kind of setting it up. And then once we got our new holes, I had to put some laminate on the control panel before I put the overlay over top of it to cover up the buttons that were no longer being used so they wouldn't poke through. And this worked very, very well. I was, I was kind of shot. And then uh, after we did all that hard work, the control panel, we put the overlay on and it just looked great. Although I, I would like to get um, one of the more traditional Centuri joysticks, the Monroe joysticks. To complete it right now it's got a wickle in there and then you can see that's my before sketch and after before we reassembled it so pretty darn close um, and here we have what it was before when we got it the wrestling game which nobody really cares about i shouldn't say that i'm sure somebody does and then now uh, the mikey which is uh you know it's uh it's your call which one's better but i like the mikey and of course now we have the ability to do multiple games with the drawer so you play Mikey in this game, this little blonde haired guy who likes to beat everybody up. So um, you can either headbutt or hip check, and on this first screen in the classroom you need to hip check out the other students and get the hearts. Once you get all the hearts in any level, you can exit and progress to the next level. Now the headbutt attack on the US version of Mikey, on the, some other versions is different EDL instead of having a headbutt. Um, you can temporarily stun your enemies, um, especially like the teacher and whatnot. Um, I don't really understand why Mikey's left away with this stuff, but anywho, in between the levels, once you exit, you go out into the hallway uh, where there's some other shenanigans and secrets. Here we have the locker room scene, and it adds a different element here um, where you can also grab these balls, which are strange because they look like footballs, but when, you, when they grab them, they're temporarily distracted by them and bounce them. Here we have the restaurant. Same way you can throw these little pots of food at them and they will temporarily eat them. Um, give me a little more time. Then once you go to the music room, um, as you can tell some of this music is lifted from the Beatles, um, totally unlicensed. Um, these dancers will stun you temporarily if they touch you, um, but you can't knock the, them out. And then the last level here, Mikey is attacked by the football team, rightfully so, and then you run off with the girl into the red convertible, and then Mikey goes off and he's a douche somewhere else. So Mikey was, again, the last Centuri game ever released, uh, although it did get a computer, home computer version for the Commodore 64 and Sinclair computers in Europe and a Sega SG 
uh, 3000, which was the predecessor of the master system in Japan. Here you see the Japanese arcade version where the sprites have been changed so it looks like an office environment instead of a school. Evidently there was some school violence going on in Japan at the time the game came out and they changed the sprites to be sensitive, otherwise the game is the same and still has the unlicensed Beatles music. After this century uh, switched gears, they got out of the game industry completely, never to return, and started packing fish. Uh, pretty odd. Uh, so then the kits were sold at a clearance uh, by a clearing house, uh, but the video game market was pretty much on a downturn at this point, so I doubt many Mikeys ever saw it to an arcade. Okay, so right now it always boots up to Mikey. If I want to play a different game, all I do is hold the first player and the second player button down and give it a second, and then it boots up to the next game. And the next game will be Circus Charlie. Now, the only real kind of difficulty sometimes when you use these multiple switchers is sometimes the left and right justification, up and down justification, is slightly different on each board. So it's never going to be perfectly aligned sometimes, but everything else should be okay. All your buttons should be the same, you know, especially if we're dealing with JAMA. What we have here, these Konami games have their own unique pinout, but they all share the same pinout. And then I have adapters that adapt them to JAMA, so you can use the JAMA switcher. And of course, if we hit it again, hear a little bit of the Circus Charlie music there. And we have Tutankhamen, Common, which is another Konami game, but released by Stern, who now makes pinball machines. So, uh, Tutankham is pretty interesting, pretty difficult game. I did have to wire a third button for this one, so the first player button actually instigates your, I guess your flash or your smart bomb in this game. And then, of course, we can do it one more time. And then we have our Rock and Roll, which is kind of the predecessor of Bionic Commando. It's a fun game. I am not very good at it. <laughs> So that was the Mikey, a rather obscure and unusual game that I actually kind of like, um, even though it's kind of a, a learning curve to learn how to play it. Uh, coming up, I have my Centuri video uh, that I'm hoping everyone will really check out. I've put a lot of work into that one. Hopefully it will be done in the next month. Uh, we also have The Simpsons that we're rebuilding. We have a special project we haven't even started yet. And we have this Battlezone Cabaret, which I'm really excited to have in the arcade. It's super tiny since we're running out of space in the arcade, um, I may have to start making some hard choices like Sophie's Choice. You know, I may have to let a couple games go or trade them for other projects. Uh, seems like 18 is kind of the limit upstairs size-wise. So anyway, uh, that's what we have. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!